mean, I've been, I been doing that for years. I've been, and every time I go, bro, I need to hurt. Did, did they ask you that night to dive to do that? Oh, no. Uh, Dixie came up to me and she says, we figured out what we want you to do. We just want you to run in, clean house, and that's it. And at the time, they 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 either they either hadn't settled on a finish yet, or she was jerking my chain to give right. it to me in sections. But right. she told me she said, "We well, know you're gonna hit the ring, clear the ring, but they're gonna come back with some other stuff." And then and then from there, so I think she went and tagged Bubba, and then he came in the room and laid the finish on me. And I was like, "What?" And he said, "Jack," and it's going to be us and y'all in the ring, and you don't have to die. Right. Okay. And then and then they did say this, and I knew it was an, an imaginary finger pointing at me. They said, unless you're told to go in the audience, if you go in the audience, you will not be getting paid. And I swear to God, when he said that, I felt like there was a, a, a neon arrow over my head, pointing down in my head, just flashing. <laughs> and I was like, why am I looking at me? You know what I mean? <laughs> and then and they started and they started laughing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I didn't um, I didn't care if, if if they would have asked me to dive, I still wouldn't have done it. Right. You know what I mean? Because bro, I I, I put my body through so much. It's like sometime now I might have to have help getting up out getting out the bed. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like um, I got to a point where I'm like trying to make me dive now like trying to throw a cat in a swimming pool. <laughs> you will get scratched and clawed up. You ain't I ain't dying right. down on I, this this girl at the that last uh that uh EC uh, stream rising show, she said, New Jack, are you gonna dive? I said, When? She said, Tonight. I said, Yeah. She said, Oh my God, I can't wait. I said, No, no, no. I'll do it for you right now. I said, I want you to I said, get your camera. So she took her camera, I said, put it on record. And she was like, what are you going to do? I said, are you recording me? Do you have She said, yeah. I stood up in a chair and jumped and just stepped right down. I said, that was my last dive. You can officially say you have it on video. Right. And she was like, are you, are you serious? I said, I'll tell you what. You take your ass up there and dive. Let me see until you tell me how I feel when you hit the ground. And, and she said, well, I never thought about it like that. But you always, I said, because I always got paid for it. I said, but that hurt. Yeah. You know, one of the, one of the I mean, dude, I knocked uh, out. I, I broke, I broke stuff. I cracked my skull. I lost, yeah, about, I lost what vision. One, um, what about the one with Vic Grimes? I mean, that was fucking sick. I mean, I, I, I've seen you dive a lot of times, but that one was, uh, wow. I you mean, mean when I threw him? Yeah, I mean, when you guys, when you guys, yeah, and then he landed on you, I think it was. Um, it looked like, I mean, I don't know how the hell. That's the one, one. That, that, that was the one that when, when, when he when Vic landed on me, yeah, that changed my life for the rest of my life because did that because make you rethink things? I will, <laughs> huh? Did that make you rethink things about about doing that? Yeah, revenge. <laughs> it made me think. It made me think revenge, and that's why when we did the free fall in L.A., when Vic had this bright idea of of him getting thrown through me pushing him off and him falling through 12 tables, I had something else in my mind. You know, there was like an imaginary X on the ground past the ring, and I was trying to throw him through it. But it, unfortunately, he just came up a little short and hit the rope. But, no, I was I knew he wasn't going to hit some tables because I have actually, oh, I was like, mm, I thought I threw him. <laughs> you know, and that was because that was because I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't comfortable with doing that spot in the first place. With him in Dan Gray, Connecticut. And he was like, Jack, if we do two tables, then, you know, and I said, Big, you, I said, you're thinking on paper. Like, you know, X times X equals squared, whatever. I said, now, on paper, you can draw this up. Okay. I said, but when it's actually done, the end result is not going to be the same as what you're thinking. Right. You know what I'm saying? I said, so here we go. We fall. We had to. Well, what was supposed to happen? We were supposed to both fall through the table, and we both get carried out of the arena, okay, out of the building. But when we got up top, and then I asked Vic before, I said, "Did you go up there and check?" Because I showed up a little late because it was snowing and you know traffic slowed down, so I didn't get in there. By the time I got there, the fans were already inside. I said, Did you go out there and check to see if that? little thing is pretty the whole both of them. And he's like, yeah, Jack, it's pretty, it's pretty. And I'm like, all right. 
So the finish is we go up there and we take the double bump through the table and we're done. And you're like, okay, got it. We're everything's fine. So when I got up there and I started climbing up this little rickety thing and it was shaking. And when I realized that when I got to the top, it was one about a six inch wide beam going across that that whatever that thing was. And that was it. And when Vic came up, and, and, and honestly, I didn't trust myself up there trying to balance, so I crawled across the vein. So when Vic came up, I grabbed him. I said, did you come up here and check this thing? And we had this conversation doing pay-per-view. He said, Jack, I'm sorry, man, but I didn't get to come up here, man. And he said, Jack, that's, that's too far to fall, man. I'm scared. I said, Vic, we are on pay-per-view. I said, on three. And he like, Jack, I can't do it. And I said, three. And I jumped back and, and I pulled him down on top of me. Well, when I hit that first table, it broke my fall, which he did this retarded somersault, which made him catch up with me. And his he was upside down. His back was pressed against my shoulder and my head, and it drove my head into the floor. And I heard this loud crack. And then I tasted something salty, nasty in my mouth, and it was some fluid coming out of my ears. Oh, wow. And I had cracked my skull, and I was in the hospital for like a month. And once I started to come around where I could make sense, they found out they, they, they didn't realize that I had lost my sight, and neither did I. Damn. Okay. And and when, when, when I was able to communicate with the doctor, I was like, why is it so dark in here? And that's when I realized that I was blind. And I was, I was totally blind blind for about four months because I had optical nerve damage. And then it started to come back around month number five or whatever, number six. And then I started to make stuff out. But in one of my eyes, my vision is still, like, really, really bad. You know what I mean? Right. So, and, and, I, and, and I, I still came back, and I still went back to diving again like an idiot. You know, and they had already told me, they said, if you hit your head in that same spot again, they said, chances are you will either be not able to walk or you'll die. Right. You know, so that's why I started telling people, you know, don't hit me in my head. If you hit me in my head, I'm going to kill your ass. You know what I mean? So <laughs> nobody would hit me in my head. And then until one indie show a couple of years ago, this kid picked up the trash can lid and hit me in the head, and I just took a razor and just cut him right in the face. I'm like, nah, I'll teach you. Were you uh were you upset at Grimes though? Like, uh, or do you think it was like uh, something? You, that, you know, you know what? Honestly, I wasn't mad because of what happened to me in the end. Right. What made me pissed off was he started to take credit for me getting hurt. Like he started, look, I put New Jack out of the business, kind of stuff. And then he started coming to the ring mocking me. You know, he wear a bandana. And, I mean, you know, Big Grimes is an idiot. He's a big, dumb idiot. You know what I mean? And 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 when I found out about it, I was like, okay. So they did a show. He did a show up in Buffalo. And Vic was there. And I walked in the locker room. This was the first time he had seen me since I had been hurt. And it was like almost a year. It was like a year. I walked in the locker room and punched him in the face. <laughs> And right. when he fell back and got up, and I had my knife in my hand. I was ready to stab him. <laughs> and and Ray was like, "Oh, Jack, hold up!" I told him, "I, I said, I told him I said, sit down." I, I told Big Brown, "I said, sit your ass down." I said, "I'll gut you like a fish." I said, "Sit <laughs> your fucking ass down." And he sat back down. Jack, I just want to explain. I said, you ain't got nothing to say to me. You know what I mean? Right. So then, Paul, he had to set up that every time. When the Baldies would work and I hit the ring, Vic would powder and run. And, and, and Vic was like, he was scared to be in the ring with me. And I just like I told Paulie, I said, Paulie, if I was going to do something to Vic, like get back at him, I said, it wouldn't be in front of 5,000 witnesses. It wouldn't even be at a wrestling show. You know what I mean? I said, what Vic did was we got hurt because of his stupidity. But then, I said, I heard because of his stupidity, but then when he started to take credit for it, like, look what I did to New Jack, that's right. when, that's what made me mad. And when they did that idea about the scalp, I said, yeah, he said, well, Rob Black, well, which one of y'all going to go up? We're going to flip a coin. I said, flip a coin all day long. 
Right, right. I said, but they going off. I ain't getting, I ain't talking to you and getting through all that. I got the E going off. And when we get up to the top, what, what Vic didn't know was I had stopped at the pawn shop and bought a stun gun. And I had it in my pocket. And if you go back and look at the tape, you can see that when we got up there, I pulled out my pocket and clicked a little button and that little lightning bolt, that little electricity thing going back and forth. You could actually see it, and you could hear it, and the fans were like, oh, so I stung Vic in the leg. And he went to the ground. Well, he went to the to, to, to the floor part, and then I just I shocked him about five or six times, and he was just, like, retarded. And he was like, Jack, wait, wait, man, I can't feel all my body parts. I said, don't worry, you ain't going to really need them. And when I picked him up, when I picked him up, I just, I didn't, I didn't let him guide himself. I threw him. And... <laughs> At the end, of, at the very end of that match, I went in the ring and I slid up to him and I said, "Now we're even." And I went to the dressing room and got my money and went back to the hotel, and I was done. Right. So. Wow. So obviously, uh, <laughs> something something else. Obviously, a lot of um, people uh, were talking recently. You know, uh, I would say in the last year or so. Uh, your situation with Knobs. I don't know if uh, you have any thoughts about that, but Knobs, obviously, you guys had a situation online. Uh, you did a great promo on him uh, online where you just tore him up, uh, basically verbally, like you always do. Um, and uh, has that been squashed between you and Knobs? Uh, no, 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 no. You know what? No, r really is not. And I'm going to tell you why. Okay, first of all, so so the people that that that, that are not familiar with it was, yes, yes. we was at a show in in, in uh, Tampa, uh, I mean Largo, Florida, Gasoline Alley, and uh, they run this show down there. It's coming called FGW. Uh, they run every Tuesday night, plug. So they um they had um a show, and I was in the locker room, and Nas came in with his little ugly-ass wife and two little <laughs> brothers or whoever they was, and they came in and sat down at the bar and started drinking like they were, and I was just like, mm, whatever. And, he, and, and, and see, he started on me when he first came up because it was me and these two other black guys that were um, at, at WCW developmental thing. Right. So when, as soon as he walked up, he said, oh, what the hell is this, Martin Luther King week or something shit? And I was like, okay. So I didn't say anything. I let that go. So when we got in the dressing room after some of the matches, he came in there. He was like, I just want to say something to you guys. He started giving this god-awful, pathetic speech about how great him and his partner was and all of the achievements that they <laughs> accomplished. And, 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 and you will be this. You could be like us one day if you stay in the business and keep your head in. And then, then he started talking down on some of the guys who matches he's seen. So at the time, my ex, which was my girl at the time, she had just texted me something, and I was reading her text, and I started laughing. Well, it, 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 it kind of went just at the end of something that he had just said. Right. And I was sitting down, and he was standing about four feet away from me. And when he said it, what he had been saying, I was looking at my phone, and I was, I started laughing at what she had just said to me. Well, he looked at me, and he said, what the hell are you laughing at, New Jack? You can't wrestle. You ain't never know how to wrestle a day in your life. Okay, now you got all these young guys sitting there. And he put me on the spot. Right. A, a spot where there was no negotiating. There was no, uh, nothing left for me to do but to do what I did. And I right. put my phone down, and I got up. And I walked up to him, and I hit him and knocked his ass out. Wow. And then I just started beating him and beating him. And I, I was trying to beat the breath out of him. And then when they when they, they were pulling me back and trying to help him get up, and he came up with this stumbling drunk and fell, and I tripped and fell backwards over a chair. And he was trying to go somewhere, and he fell and grabbed my leg. And when he grabbed my leg, I came back up again and kicked him in the top of the head. And then he went limp again. Right. So when they got him up and he walked, they walked him out of the dressing room. He came back in and he was like, "New Jack Paul, I'm all even friends." I said, "I don't even know you." I said, "I I, I worked one show with you, and I've done three appearances for autographs or a sign with you convention." 
I just all I know about you. 